Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Long Dark. Now, we just basically took out everything. Now, we don't have food yet, but I'm not necessarily worried about that. Um, we should be good for a little while. And like I said, we got underneath the 77 pound mark, which is good. And uh, what I just decided, you know what, screw it. We're going to go to the next land. If I pick one of these up, will it put me over white? Yes, it will. So let's actually just drop that. It'll be fine for a while. Not for a very long while, but it will be fine for a while. But anyway, I decided just to go for it. You know, uh, we got a got a mountaineering rope just in case. Uh, we're going to go down here to the barn right quick, put our bow back where we made it. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be going first thing to the new land. Now, I don't necessarily know where it goes. Um, I think it goes to, like, not R Hushed River, but I think it's, like, Broken Railroad or something like that. And then there's another one also in there. Uh, so that's uh, going to help us out a little bit uh, and explore new land, you know, give us something to, uh, else to talk about instead of just, you know, the whole same thing. Hoopla hoopla, right? And, uh, yeah. So that's what we're going to do. Ah, boy, howdy. You know, uh, this is a nice place. Uh, another place that I haven't necessarily been to is Timberwolf Mountain. Uh, now, we ha I have been there before, um, so, you know, I know how to get there and everything else. But the problem is is that there is literally nothing there. Um, and, and the same as Hushed River Valley. Hushed River Valley, you can get to Hushed River Valley, let's say it four times just in case, uh, from this place but there like I, I uh, started uh, uh, the first time I died if you haven't seen that go back and check it out uh, the first time I died uh, I, I decided you know what let's just start it here and uh, let's go here you know make, make it a little bit interesting and it was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life because I had no food no clothes no nothing and there was like a bear, there's wolves, just like you know everywhere else. But I mean, there was nowhere to camp out. I didn't find any houses. I found like this ice sculpture, ice sculpture thing. Uh, that was about it. And I'm like, holy crap! I was like, How, you know, I gotta look somewhat good. I can't just look like I never played this game before. And so I left. <laughs> oh, and I couldn't find a way to get out, so I actually did end up quitting and uh, leaving. Oh, look at the bunnies. We also need to make snares. I probably mentioned that in about the last 15 episodes. But, you know, I have a short-term memory. And uh, I can't remember nothing that uh, passed anything. But I will tell you the story right quick. Because I feel like it's uh, pretty interesting. So we went from... Uh, we were down in uh, Fontana, California. If you don't know what that is, I, I like to call it hell on earth. Because it's hotter than hell. No one knows how to drive. And I just don't like California. So anyway, Fontana, California is next to L.A. It's about uh, 50, 60 miles east of uh, L.A. Basically, it's just L.A. I mean, you know, uh, there's there's not much to it other than that. And so we went down there, and uh, we had to pick up at a, uh, a shipper of craft. You know, like uh, craft mac and cheese, craft ketchup, so, or uh, that's Heinz, but anyway, you know, craft goods, and uh, they said that I had to keep my reefer, my uh, reefer unit, which is a refrigerated unit, I don't know why it's called a reefer, but that's just what they call it, and so they call it, or uh, they wanted it at 28 degrees, and I could not understand why they wanted it at 28 degrees, I couldn't figure out what they kept at 28 degrees, especially from craft, like what in the world? And so, you know, they did that, and I'm like, okay, whatever. And so we went and picked it up, and I said the reefer 28, and, and everything was fine. Well, it ended up to be cheese. And I was like, well, wouldn't that freeze cheese at 28 degrees? Apparently not. And I thought that was kind of weird. Anyway, long story short, so we sat there four and a half hours getting loaded with about 20 pallets of cheese, all sorts of kinds of cheese. Uh, like the American uh, square cheese, like you put on sandwiches, um, 
you like cheddar cheese, Colby Jack cheese, like the big five pound blocks of cheese, all sorts of cheese. And uh, that was going up to Layton, Utah. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, that's cool. I, I like going to Layton. Um, you know, my company has a, uh, uh, a yard there, so, you know, I wouldn't have to fight for parking, which is fantastic. And so we went down there, or, well, technically up there. It was about uh, 600 and, a truck over here. It was about 600 and some miles. You know, not too shabby. Now, I know no, Double Z would, would uh, look at me and, and go, hey, why didn't you pick that up? Because I already got some. <laughs> oh, boy, howdy. But, yeah, so uh, we went up there, and, uh, you know, everything was all fine and dandy. You know, uh, it was it was rather, you know, boring trip. But there was one spot that uh, was super hot, and it was uh, by Mesquite, Mesquite, I don't know, something like that in Nevada. And let me tell you what, it was hot, it was insane. So we took I-15 from Fontana all the way up. You know, and I, I've never been on I-15 other than the fact of uh, where 84 and 15 merge um, out of Idaho going down to Lake Utah. So that's, that's the only experience I have on 15. I've never been, you know, south or north of that. Well, actually, I lied. I, we've been all the way up to Montana in I-15, just not Helena. We only stopped at Butte. Anyway, long story short. So we, we did that, and uh, we uh, went through Mesquite, and it was 115 degrees. Now, that's not terrible. Okay, like, I mean, yeah, it's hot, but it's not terrible. But now, if you live in a semi... You know, you, you really rely on a air conditioning. Well, if the air conditioning don't necessarily work all the time, it's hotter than hell. All right? So, yeah, it, it wasn't fun. This kind of looks like a dead end, so I don't know why I'm walking back here. So, it was hotter than hell. Well, I, I got out, and you know, because I was a moron, and, and I thought, hell, what's the worst that can happen? I got out, put the lock on the door like I'm supposed to so nobody steals it, even though if, if someone wants to load, I, I don't think a little tiny, you know, lock is going to block them, but whatever, that's that's just my opinion. And so I put the lock on the door, and, and everything was fine. Now, I mentioned I put the lock on the door because of the fact of everything was fine in that moment. Now, you might ask, well, what do you mean everything was fine in that moment? Everything was looking normal, the tires and everything. Well, what was crazy about the whole thing was it was 115. As soon as we got to St. George, Utah, going northbound on I-15, it went from 115 to 70. And I thought, that was kind of weird. And there was a massive thunderstorm, thunder lightning storm, you know, big old raindrops, hail, everything. It was, it was crazy. It was actually pretty cool, but it was crazy. And so we, uh, we drove through that, and, and we we're going to stop at a rest area. And Kimberly was like, you know what? No, let's let's just go up to the pilot. Now you got to understand, I don't like going to truck stops, not because you know they're bad or whatever. It's just because you have more of a chance to get hit. Useful. And I don't like going to truck stops because I don't like getting hit because no one knows how to back up a truck. So we went to the pilot anyway because you know women knows everything, and uh, I didn't want them gloves. And so, because, you know, women know yeah, all and everything yeah, else, we uh, went up to the pilot, which is which is actually a good thing at the end of the day because of the fact of when we got to the pilot, I got out, you know, make sure the, the lock's still there because you never know what the hell can happen. And, uh, you know, I was doing a post trip. And so we did that, and I, I was walking back up on the driver's side, and all of a sudden, I was like, wait a minute, I, that don't look right, right? Well, what happened was, is that we drive super singles. What a super single is, is that uh, it's, it's basically like a 13-inch tire across. It, it's a humongous tire. They weigh about fucking half a truck. And, uh, you know, not a lot of people like them. Well, me neither. But... Anyway, half of that tire was gone. Oh, leave me alone, you babushka. 
Oh, wow, he's just gonna come anyway. Oh, I missed. I missed. I missed. Ah! <laughs> Bitch. Okay, well. Everything, you, you know, lines aid. out. Of, I know you need first aid. I'm trying to tell a story. So yeah, it was, it was the craziest thing because uh, I come up and half of the tire was gone. And uh, I was like, how in the hell would, would that happen, right? You know, because... Now, I know they run recaps because recaps are, are uh, cheaper. And if you don't know what a recap is, what happens is, is like when you blow a tire and everything and it's salvageable, what they'll do is they'll just put another... They'll put more newer tread on it and it's called a recap. Do they work better? No. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Basically, they're just a pile of shit, but, you know, hey, they're cheaper, and most companies don't want to buy brand new tires, so they put on a recap. Well, that's what happened to me. They put a recap on this tire, and then uh, they, they just half of it ripped off. And so, I'm, you know, I was driving down the road, and I never noticed it. It was uh, on the trailer. We call them the tandems. It was on the front left tandem. It, it ripped off. And, and so I called my company and said, hey, I, I'm missing half of my tire. And they said, well, how the hell did you lose half of the tire? And I said, I have no idea. It's just gone. And so they sent out a tire guy. I had to take pictures and send it to, uh, to the company and... Forlorn musket. Okay, well that's cool. I figured I was gonna be here, but who knows? And so yeah, so I had to. Hello, that's a that's a steep little downhill, don't you think? So I had to I had to go to uh, call call my company. Then the guy had to come. But since I was that pilot, I didn't have to do a uh, I didn't have to be on duty because I was in a quote unquote safe haven. And because I was in safe haven, I didn't have to worry about it. And I feel like I've been here on Forlorn Muskang before. And somehow, uh, I didn't see that before. Yes, because I've definitely been here, but why couldn't I not find that? Oh, here. This would be a good time to use this hoogee jigger thing. Uh, d uh, direction? Rotate left. Whoop. Okay. And oh, paint. Two. Paint. Ooh. Well, that's cool. I'm gonna do it on this side too. That's why. I rotate and boom. There. Now, supposedly, it's supposed to stay on there for a while, but I don't know. The only way to find out is to leave and figure out if it stays there. But yeah, we have definitely been here before on the last go-around, and I honestly can't believe I didn't see that. Now I'll probably miss it because I didn't... whatever. Anyway, besides the point. So yeah, so I called my company, and, and they were like, oh, well, you know, now you're going to have to get the tire changed. And I'm like, really? You know, I'm not a moron. And uh, so we got the tire changed, and that took about three hours. And then Kimberly was like, you know what, since we're at a pilot, let's might, just might as well take a shower. And so we took a shower. And, uh, and because we took a shower, that put us at about five hours. And so we only got about four hours of sleep that night. Which was, you know, not the greatest thing in the world, but because we were there, might as well take a shower because, you know, truck drivers are stinky and we don't get a shower all the time. So when you do get the opportunity to take a shower, you take a shower, right? This is what you do. So yeah, that's what we did. Making sure there ain't no bears or nothing over here. And so, yeah, so we took a shower, you know, went to bed, woke up about 2.30 that next morning after about, you know, man, three, four hours sleep. Got up and hauled ass up to Lake New Top. Well, I asked for a drop, and a, and a drop is basically what it sounds like. It, it just means you drop a trailer, pick up an empty one or whatever, and then leave. 
Well, then it turns out that my company, my DM, which is my driver manager, which is uh, the giant moron that doesn't fucking help you with anything. Um, my normal DM, she was uh, out of the office for some reason. I can't remember why. Uh, she was gone for a week. And so what happened was is that since she was gone, I had a new DM, and he... And I do not see eye to eye. And it really sucks because, if it, you know, you got to be nice to them no matter what. Because if you are not, they will literally make your life a living hell. And you don't want that. Why? Because that means you don't get loads, you can't get drops, you can't get nothing. Well, somehow I pissed this dude off. I don't know how. That's kind of nerve-wracking a little bit. But anyway, I pissed this guy off somehow, and... Ooh, I don't want that. And so, he never even asked for a drop. So what we did was we went in there for a good... Eight hours in late in Utah. And the, and the delivery was, like, literally right across the street. I mean, if, if it was farther than I could understand why... You know, I would have to stay there. But it was right across the street. Literally anybody could have taken it. And I was there at like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, and I didn't deliver till 10 o'clock that night. So I had just enough time to get a 10-hour break. And that basically reset, reset your clock, everything else, da 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 Well, anyway, because he didn't ask for a drop, I set my PTA projected time available to the next morning at 8 o'clock in the morning. And I did that just so, you know, I could catch up on sleep, so, uh, you know, I wasn't driving the truck all the time dead tired and so what he done was oh well you have a full clock on you and, and you just you'll just start so I'm gonna you know set it at 2200 which is 10 o'clock right after you deliver well the problem was is that I didn't get fully unloaded until about 1130 that night because it took them four and a half hours to get me unloaded so that's two times it took an four and a half hours to get loaded and four and a half hours to get unloaded. It was the craziest thing. When you go to Kroger or uh, Fred Meyer or Smith's, same thing, it takes them literally forever to unload the truck. I don't know why. It drives me nuts, but it does. And it's annoying. Okay. That's annoying. Now, I wanted to sleep here, but it looks like we're just going to get sucked in anyway. Now, Forlorn Muskeg also has a uh, broken railroad. Okay. Um, Forlorn Muskeg has a forge, and that's where we're going to go get uh, all, the, all the good stuff that we need. But just because of the fact that uh, we don't have literally anything of what we need. Uh, oh, and we forgot to drop off the bow. Oh, well. See, look, that's what happens when you just get all carried away with the talk. So, anyway. Um, but, yeah, former Muskeg, instead of going right like... Yee, holy mackerel, that scared me a little bit. Instead of going right like we did on the railroad, all you got to do is just go straight and follow the map to, like, counterclockwise, and then we'll run into it. It's like in a little barn shed. I'll show you that later once we get ready to do that. That's a big deer, you know, and, and I don't like when it's foggy like this. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'll show you that later uh, when we're actually more able to do so. Now, I know I want to leave the railroad, but I don't remember when. I haven't done this in like a year and a half or two years. It has been uh, a little while since I've done that, done this. Um... Oh, and plus it's foggy, so that, that helps out a lot. I know that the road road breaks, so you got to go down. But I can't remember when. I'm just going to go down now. Probably where I want to go. You know, hopefully you guys even find this even remotely interesting. Because, uh, you know, I try to make it the most interesting as I can. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if you guys like my trucking stories. I don't know. Basically anything. So uh, basically whatever pops in my little noggin uh, is what you guys get to listen to. Yep, I want to go over here, get up get up on this one, and then crawl over that. 
But yeah, well, I mean, whatever pops into my little noggin is basically what I say. And that's just because of, I mean, I sit in a truck all day. You know, I, I drive a truck thousands of miles a month. And so when you do that, yeah, I have Kim with me. But, you know, you can't really uh, uh, talk about anything, you know, because, like, I probably know Kimberly better than anybody because I've been in a truck with her for a year now. Okay. Now, you may ask yourself, how are you, how you been driving for a year? And, and I've had six months experience before I went back, and now I have six more months experience because I started on January 3rd again. Um... So that's a year, and then in January will be my full year, so that'll be a year and a half, and she's gone with me every single day. And so I probably know her better than anybody. And, uh, you know, we have a system down. When we're dropping a trailer, she'll jump out and, and do the landing gear while I'll do the either paperwork and, and the uh, connections, or she will do the paperwork and I'll do everything. You know, it just depends on uh, what we're feeling like that day. And, uh, you know, she's better at the paperwork than I am. Even though it's my job, she does the paperwork. Why? I don't know. It's just the way it works. And then uh, we got to transflow it, which means you just got to send in all your paperwork through the phone. And so that actually gets you paid for it. Because if you don't send it in, you don't get paid for it. It's stupid, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. And, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So, you know, we, we got a... Uh, we have a, a system of, uh, of what we do. And, uh, you know, so that's just what we do. I mean, it makes it easier, uh, you know, when we get in tight spots um, and, it, and, and it's real hard to back into a parking spot or whatever, I'll kick her out. And so she'll tell me um, where she wants the trailer uh, so I don't hit nothing. Where is it? Where is it? Nope, it's right there. This would be the second one this episode. Boom. See, look what you get. I'm not going to pick them up. I mean, we do need food. But, I mean, I think we got enough. So we're going to have to remember that he's there. I mean, it's not cold. You know what? Screw it. We're, we're going to go get him. We're just going to basically quarter him right quick. It's going to take an hour. Hopefully it doesn't get dark. Now we're going to get hungry. Okay, okay, okay. Now eat something, eat something. Eat something, okay. Eat some more, eat some more. That was really close. I don't want to lose my uh, plus 10 or plus 11 pounds. That's not good if you do. Uh, I don't necessarily need the guts, but I'll take them anyway. Oh, hey, cleared up a little bit. Look at there. That's fantastic. Man, this game is like... A, a worldly difference when it clears up. When it's foggy, it's hard to see everything, just like in real life. And then as soon as it clears up, right there. man, this game's pretty. Any hooser, you know, and uh, so, yeah, so she helps me back up and everything else. I mean, I, I call her my little cheat sheet, and that's just because of the fact of, you know, if I need help, she's there. You know, it doesn't make my life any easier with her there because that truck does not get any bigger it's relatively small and so when she's in there you know that's just another person's taking up space we have to have her stuff in the truck we can't put as much fuel on because she is in the truck you know so i mean it's like a give and take you know um well you can't go on that side uh, it's a give and take. You're like, yeah, I love her being out there, but also, you know, we got to deal with more heat just because we can't put all this fuel on. And, you know, we're not big people, right? So, I mean, it's yeah, just the just down. the way it happens. But just sometimes if, like, uh, if we take a 45,000-pound load, oh, there it is. If we take a 45,000-pound load, that's damn near full weight. So, you know, the most we can put on is about three quarters and full full tank of death. And that's that's it, right? It's just the way it is. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you guys like these little stories about uh, our adventure time and, and, and truck driving and everything else, let me know down in the comments below. 
because I have a ton, a ton of stories, um, you know, like uh, the whole tire blow. You know, if I remember, I'll uh, add, a, add a picture at the end of the video. I'm probably going to have to get Kimberly's phone for that because she takes all the pictures and I don't. But anyway, so uh, we'll see. Are you serious? There you go. And uh, another thing, you know, uh, if you want to see, like, all the pictures that we have, um, I will literally put up a, a slideshow of them. Um, and then uh, I'll do that for you guys if you want to see it. I mean, so, uh, you know, let me know. Let me know what you guys want to see. Um, and then uh, I'll try to uh, put it all together. <sighs> we are almost there. I don't know how long this video has been going on. So, <laughs> I don't know. Probably a good 20, 30 minutes. I might cut some of it out and might not. I might just leave it as raw as it is. Or we'll, we'll take it out and, and so on and so forth. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's get down here. We're moving real slow. I mean, this we're just getting heavier and heavier. But we had to get that wolf. Um, you know, everything we do is basically for a reason. I mean, you got to get food. You got to do everything else. Oh, and another thing, we are actually going crabbing on Thursday, which is tomorrow. It is Wednesday. And, uh, yeah, I'm super excited. I haven't been able to go fishing or hunting or nothing. I, well, we won't be able to go hunting this year, but we won't. We haven't been able to go fishing this year, um, especially with the whole COVID-19 thing. I mean, it's just been, uh, been terrible. Now, of course, you know, the whole COVID-19 thing is a whole whole different topic for another story, so I'm not even going to get into that. But we've been working all the way through it. There, uh, is the windows in here? No, they're all broken. Oh, well, yeah, it's a whole different topic. You know, I worked the whole time. Um, we've been out the entire time. Of course, we took days off, but we've been out there through the heat of it. We've been... We haven't seen no riots yet. Hopefully we don't see any riots because I don't really want to drive through any riots. I mean, there's been a lot of truck drivers that have been killed because of people jumping on their trucks. There's been a lot of people, you know, all sorts of shit. I don't really feel like dealing with that. And so, yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, it's just been uh, normal. I mean, normal as it can be. Any uh, wolves or anything in here? I mean, it looks like we're warm, but I, I think there's a little building down here. A lot of stuff in here to look through and everything else. And yeah, there's a bench right there. I think there's a bed in here. Yeah, there's a bed in here right there. So actually, that's what we're going to be doing. We are going to uh, basically set up shop here for a while. You know, this is basically going to be our new home. Gotta take this food. Ooh. ketchup chips. I never even heard of such a thing as that, but whatever. But yeah, this is where we're going to set up home. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble on about everything, and uh, you know, like I said, if you have any... What the hell is that? If you have any ideas about uh, you know, what kind of video you want to see, or, or anything like that, let me know down in the comments below. Leave a big like on this on this video if you want to, you know, help grow the channel and everything else. I really do appreciate everything you guys do, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.